welcome to Easy Gluten Free. Have you guys seen the advertisement for Little Caesars Deep Dish Bacon Wrapped Pizza? Have you tried it? I can't try it. Damn you gluten. But I can try to reproduce it. Let's see how we did. And trying to copy Little Caesars Bacon Wrapped Deep Dish is more technique than it is recipe. And their large pie is actually baked in two smaller rectangles so that each epic slice is surrounded on two full edges by smoky bacon. So instead of using this 9 by 12 pan, which was my original intention, I opted for two smaller 6 by 10 pans and lined them each with parchment paper overhanging the two long sides to help ensure that I'd have no issues removing these babies later. And I clipped the paper in place with stationary clips to make sure that it stays put as I try to get the bacon and crust pressed into place. And before positioning the bacon, I sprayed the parchment with nonstick spray. And as I placed four slices of bacon around the edges of each pan, I tried to go for about a half inch overlap of the bacon onto the bottom of the pan. I also made sure to have the leaner side facing up. So the side with more fat on the bottom would help make it crispier as the fat renders. Another thing I tried to do was push the bacon into the corners to add a little more slack there, trying to account for the inevitable bacon shrinkage as it bakes. And I overlapped the slices about a half an inch as well. And when I had both pans done, I placed them in the fridge to firm up as I prepped the crust dough. And for that crust, I used one package of Bob's Red Mill gluten-free pizza crust mix prepared exactly according to the package instructions, but I did deviate quite a bit from their baking instructions. Once the dough is mixed, their instructions tell you to divide the dough in half in the bowl, cover it, and let it rise for 20 minutes, which I determined to be pointless for my application. So instead, I weighed the two halves to get them perfectly equal and pressed the dough into the pans. And they instruct you to use wet hands to keep the dough from sticking to yourself but I found that the dough doesn't stick to plastic wrap. So that's what I use to work the dough into place. And you've got to make sure that the dough is on top of the bacon at all the edges and just take your time. It's going to take a few minutes to keep working it along to the edges and making sure it covers just over the edge of the bacon. And when I had both pans done, to help level out the dough even more, for each of the pans of bacon wrapped dough covered in plastic, I took the opposing pan and press down firmly to get a pretty level crust. Now we'll let the dough rise for one and a half hours to get the most volume as possible in this deep dish pie. Now remove the plastic wrap, and you can see how much it's risen here. Then contrary to their instructions again, which tell you to bake this untopped for seven to nine minutes, I added about a half cup or so of sauce to each of the pies, because in my opinion, a deep dish should be crisp on the bottom but the top should remain soft and almost blend right in with the sauce and cheese. And I don't see that happening after the recommended initial bake would almost seal the pores on the crust. Now bake it for 10 minutes without any of the other toppings. And when it comes out of the oven, you could add a bit more sauce if you think the top looks too dry. Then I added 8 ounces of shredded mozzarella to each pie, but I only laid down about 6 ounces first. And you want to go all the way to the edges with this copycat. Next, I added two slices of crispy bacon scattered over each, then the remaining mozzarella to anchor everything in place. Now we'll bake it again for 15 minutes before adding the pepperoni, since we don't want it to get all shriveled up. And when the pizzas come out of the oven, scatter over the pepperoni, and bake for an additional 5 to 10 minutes, depending on how dark you want it. Now let these guys rest in the pan for a couple of minutes, then they'll lift right out of the pan. And once they've cooled for 5 minutes or so, you can slide them right off the parchment and onto a baking rack to keep the bottom crispy. Now slice each pizza into four epic sized pieces and you're ready to dig in. And once you do take a bite of this, you can rest assured that all that Little Caesars envy will fly straight out the window. The bottom of the pizza was nicely browned and crisp and the top was dripping with gooey cheese, bacon, and pepperoni but you're probably not going to be able to eat more than one slice of this one. So the leftovers can be individually wrapped in plastic, frozen, and then reheated on a baking sheet for 15 minutes or so. And if you happen to get bored of eating the leftovers like this, 
and want to turn it into a more upscale brunch, you could always hit it with some crispy kale and a fried egg for a delicious twist on this epic pizza. And if you'd like to print a copy of today's pizza recipe or read a few more tips, you could always visit my blog at the link below. And for brand new recipes every week, don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon.